Hello everyone, this video is about binary classification on imbalanced dataset, which is a common situation you're going to meet when doing classification problems. We're going to introduce the idea and the techniques we use with an example of a company. Nowadays, predicting customers' purchasing behaviors has been the focus of marketing strategies. And with the rapid growth of recent digitalization, we now have access to a numerous amount of data. But at the same time, you have to be smart enough to be able to use the data well and generate a good profit of a business. The background story is, we are having a large chain of premium wine and chocolate store. And the store introduced a new chocolate prof uh, product. And before spending substantial funds, the CEO wants to conduct a, an initial feasibility study. They sent the sample product for free to 40,000 target customers among their 2.5 million members and recorded whether the customer ordered the new product within one month or not. Based on the data, we aim to develop a customer targeting model to improve marketing efficiency and ultimately improve the profit gained by the new product. We know from the company that they are expecting a 35.5 US dollar profit from every customer that buys the product and the cost of targeting one customer is 6.6 .6 US dollar. First, let's look at a data set. As mentioned before, we are having 40,000 data points and uh, 21 attributes. Here is a description of the attributes. You can take a look. The dependent variables, the y's of our data set is the buyer flag, which is really easy to understand. Zero means not purchasing and one means purchasing. Second, we move on to data preprocessing. We remove ID and previous sample. These two attributes by their definition, should be irrelevant to the dependent variable. And then we randomly divide the data set into training set, validation set, and then test set with a ratio of 80, 10, and 10. Now let's talk about the truth of model. The first model that comes into our mind is logistic regression. The reason is because this is a binary classification problem and sigmoid function generally works really well. And the second model we want to use is the support vector machine. This is a, a advanced classifier because it can provide long a non-linear class uh, decision boundaries with, uh, with the use of a kernel. And let's see some first trial results. Here's the logistic regression. You can see the accuracy is around 91.45%. Oh, sorry. And the support vector machine with RBF kernel. Here the test error for this model is 8%, which means the accuracy of on the test set is around 92%. So the accuracy seems to be really good, but there is a huge problem. If we look back to the results, we can see that the model is almost predicting no, or an ESVM actually, it is predicting no one values. So basically the model predicts every data point as zero. For, for a company, of course, you doesn't lose any money. You make no mistake if you doesn't take any action. You doesn't target any customer, but at the same time you make no profit, then, then why are you here? Why are you doing a business, right? So the problem is because we are having a skilled data set. If we look at a training set and test set, we can easily see that more than 90% of the data in the set are labeled as zero, and there's only less than 10% that, that are actually labeled as one. As a result, every classification model we build will tend to predict um, much more zeros and ones. And let's think about a naive like classifier so, so 
the classifier doesn't know anything and just blindly predicting every data point as zero, it will still have a baseline accuracy around 92%. So based on this discovery, we can see that ac accuracy is not a good evaluation of our model here. So we have to look at other measurements. For example, the F1 measure. Before we introduce the F1 me measure, we, you have to know what is precision and recall. And uh, if, we treat, uh, if we treat 1 as positive and 0 as negative, the definition of those three measurements are listed here. You can take a look. Let's move on to three popular tricks to deal with good data set. We choose those three tricks because they are widely mentioned on the internet. We search about this problem, let's, let's say on Stack Overflow or cross validating and other websites. And uh, there are many uh, academic assays uh, or many people actually on the internet, they are mentioning these three techniques. So we want to have a try. The first one, cost-sensitive logistic. What is cost-sensitive classification is basically it say, sets different weights to misclassification. Usually we think, okay, a mistake is a mistake. So a uh, false negative is the same as a false positive. But in this case, and in, actually in many other cases, it is not. So here, a false positive, which means predicting a wrong customer is not that costly. But missing a potential customer, which means it's a false negative, is much more costly. So we assign different ways to these two values. And you can see the result of a cost-sensitive logistic regression is like this. The profit in this case is around 3,300 bucks. And the OVR is 31%. The, the definition of OVR is given here. We can see there's like remarkable improvement of the model. If you still remember, the original logistic regression only gives around like 50 uh, prediction of ones, correct? Uh, and this one is giving like 165. So it's, it's, it's like three times the amount, which is really good. And uh, for cost sensitive uh, support vector machines, we are having a problem. For some reason, the cost sensitive SVM doesn't work on linear, uh, non linear SVM, sorry. Regardless what kind of weights we set, you can see from the code here, even, uh, we've tried different weights, but the model just always predicts everything as zero. Uh, we haven't found out the reason yet, but we'll keep investigating on this issue. Okay, let's move on to the other two tricks. Uh, the second trick here is on the sampling. Uh, so since our problem here is that we don't have we don't have the equal number of the data points labeled with zeros and ones, so why not we just uh, adjust that and uh, make them equal? Uh, the idea is simple. So we can actually remove the extra data points labeled with zeros to make uh, the number of uh, data points labeled with zeros and equals the same. Uh, the, the disadvantage here is very obvious. So uh, based on our available data points, uh, the, tr the training set will be very small. Uh, so the model based on this training set is actually not so satisfying. Uh, the model is starting to predict zero once, but then it's not predicting once very frequently. So we actually have negative profit here. Uh, this and uh, based on some similar ideologies, uh, we can also add more data points labeled with ones and using the SMOT method. Uh, what is SMOT? Uh, SMOT is method is used to generate st stimulated points around the original data, original data points. And uh, as we can see from this graph, uh, at first, the original data set, we don't in the original data, the original data set, we don't have the equal number of orange and uh, blue data points here. And uh, uh, after applying this mode method, uh, we automatically generate uh, blue points so that now their numbers are equal. Uh, the smote methodology is also included 
uh, in the Python package. Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, it's here. So uh, we use the package called imbalanced learning, and then uh, we can generate uh, the smooth result using this code. You can have a look. Uh, however, based on those two, uh, based on this ideology and applying those uh, two methods. Oh, by the way, the add same method is an, just an extension of the smooth methodology. The basic idea is the same, uh, but uh, the prediction results are still far from satisfying the, because the mo the models are still not predicting enough number of ones. So, what should we do? Uh, we decide to have a combination of the two uh, oversampling and the undersampling uh, method. Uh, and uh, after applied those two methods onto the logistic regression, we see that there's a huge improvement. Uh, you can see the specific uh, statistics here. But what happened? So what we have done here is that since those both the oversampling and the undersampling has their advantages, so we just combined those two methods together. So we still reduce the number of zeros, but we keep one third of zero data instead of the originally what we done in the previous example. We we only keep one ninth of the data, and. Uh, after keep the zero data, we we use mode to sti stimulate data points um, labeled with ones, so that now those two uh, kind of data points are numbered the same. And then the prediction result is pretty amazing. Uh, we see that the the model is starting to predict ones. And the overall profit in this case is very high. And uh, let's see from the, the OVR, which we, we can record the OVR uh, defined by the profit divided by maximum prof, uh, pro, pro, the maximum possible profit. So that we can see that the OVR of 81.94% means that we almost get all the possible profits uh, technically available. So this is a very good result. Uh, so let's move on to our conclusion part. After uh, after finishing all those uh, research, we can draw four conclusions. Uh, first of all, uh, the accuracy of the model is useless when dealing with good data set. And instead, we should look at uh, precision recall and FF measure. And second, the popular tricks used uh, have been improved uh, to be effective, but they are not the panacea. Uh, we should actually try different ways before we get a good result. And actually, we can also try to combine those two different ways, several different ways. And then uh, the SVM model shows this quality, which is not surprising because it provides decision boundary that is nonlinear with kernel. And at the same time, logistic regression is a generalized linear model, and it's almost impossible for real-life data to be linear separable. Thus, it performs worse than a SVM model. OK, thank you for your attention. Alt, jar, F.